It was a warm night in the woods. The animals were all tucked up in their beds, ready for a good night's rest before another exciting day tomorrow. The bees had ceased their buzzing. The birds had halted their flapping. And the moose had curled up under the branches of a fallen tree for the perfect shelter for the night. Deep in a dark cave, hidden behind rocks and bushes and branches, a family of bears resided. There was a mummy bear and a daddy bear and their five young cubs. Lana was the eldest of the five young bear cubs. She was headstrong and brave and she delighted in guiding her younger siblings and helping her parents to teach them all she had learnt so far. Then there was Bucky, Coco, Luella and Theodore. They all looked up to Lana as if she was their third parent. In the daytime, the cubs were very playful and loved to wrestle and tumble about. They would chase one another and stuff their faces with delicious berries and fruit. Sometimes their father would take them down to the riverside and teach them how to fish, while their mother would teach them how to reach the fruit on the highest branches with little assistance. All of the cubs had brown fur the colour of chocolate, long snouts with twitchy little noses that loved to sniff around for food, small rounded ears and fluffy button tails. They were cuddly little things, and at night they were the snuggliest of all creatures. After a busy day of playing, learning and roaming, the five baby cubs would retreat to their cave with their mother and father to rest for the night. They would all huddle up close to one another and bury their faces in each other's furry sides and tuck their little paws in close. It was so warm and cosy in this little huddle of bodies. Every night, the young cubs would be restless until their mother would calm them down and soothe them with a sweet song. The cubs would beg, Sing us your lullaby, Mama. They would beg and beg until Mummy Bear gave in. All right, she sighed every time, if you insist. She would then sing the five cubs a gentle, melodic song that would quickly whisk the young cubs away to dreamland. It worked a treat every time. Not before long, the five children would all be snoozing away, gently purring and snoring as they wriggled up closer together, sleeping peacefully, thanks to the sound of their mother's relaxing lullaby. One night, the five cubs were restless and waiting for it to be time to go to bed. Mummy Bear was still out fishing and Daddy Bear was growing tired. He tried to urge the bear cubs to settle down for the night, but they were too full of energy. Bucky protested as their father tried to make them go to sleep. We can't fall asleep without Mama singing to us. Of course you can, Daddy Bear insisted, refusing to accept this excuse. You are very capable of falling asleep of your own accord. Now, settle down. The five bear cubs curled up close to one another and attempted to fall asleep, but they wriggled and rocked from side to side, unable to get truly comfortable. Eventually, Luella turned to her older sister, Lana, and asked, Can you sing us Mama's lullaby, Lana? Lana always wanted to be helpful, and she delighted in helping her parents look after her younger siblings. I'll give it a try, Lana replied. She began racking her brain, trying to recall the lyrics to her mother's nighttime song. Balana was stumped. She could remember the lyrics to the first verse, but she couldn't seem to remember any more of it. 
she decided to start singing in the hopes that the rest would come to her. Sleep, my darling, sleep through the night. Mama Bear is here and everything is right. Dream of adventures, dream of peace. I'll see you in the morning when your dreams all cease. Lana stopped. She couldn't remember anything else, and she'd forgotten the tune. That didn't sound right, Theodore complained. That didn't sound like Mama's lullaby at all. Lana folded her arms across her chest in frustration. Well, don't blame me, she pouted. It's not my fault I can't remember the song. I'm usually asleep by the time she finishes it. Coco rolled over onto his side, looked up at Lana and said, Well, that didn't sound right. Lana began to sulk. She always had the answers for her younger siblings, and she did not appreciate being called out on her shortcomings. Her father noticed her disappointment and piped up, Your mother is still going to be out for a while, but I'm sure there are lots of our neighbours that will know the song. Why don't you go ask them to help you? It's still quite light out, so they shouldn't be tucked up in their beds quite yet. Lana's motivation pricked up at the suggestion. There were lots of musical animals in the woods, and surely one of them would know the rest of Mummy Bear's lullaby. Lana left her younger siblings behind with Daddy Bear and headed out of their cave and into the evening air to ask their neighbours for help. Lana looked around and wondered where to begin. Now, who is the best singer in the woods, she pondered, spinning around to look in each direction. There were lots of animals to choose from. The woods could be a most amazing place to wander around. Everywhere you went, there was some sort of musical entertainment to delight your ears, from the animals on the ground to the creatures in the trees. I'll go to the river first, Lana decided. There is always a lot of music and commotion coming from down there. Lana plodded her way down the hillside to the gushing river. With each step as she drew closer, she could hear the frogs croaking and chirping in harmony. She reached the side of the river and spotted three tiny green frogs with big, beady eyes sat on the river bank on the other side. The frogs barely even acknowledged Lana. They kept singing their little song in perfect three-part harmony. The frogs by the river weren't the friendliest of creatures. They were pleasant enough, but they were very territorial of their position on the riverside, and they didn't like anyone getting too close or stepping foot on their turf. What are you looking at? The frog in the middle called across the bank. Have you just come to stare or to listen to our song? Lana didn't particularly want to stop and listen. All that the frogs ever seemed to sing about was the weather. If it was raining, the frogs had a song for it. If the sun was shining, the frogs had another song to sing. Their repertoire of music wasn't the largest, and Lana had heard all of their songs a thousand times before. She hoped that within their songbook, they had the same lullaby that her mother always sang. Not quite, Lana began to reply. I was hoping that you might be able to help me. There is a song that my mother always sings to us each night. She's away fishing this evening, and I want to help my brothers and sister fall asleep with the lullaby, but I can't remember it. Do you think you might know it? 
The frogs chuckled between themselves and haughtily replied, It's unlikely that we would know such a basic song as a lullaby when our musical repertoire is so advanced, but we'll give it a try. Sing what you know for us. Lana shook off their snobbish comment and attempted to sing what she knew of her mother's lullaby. The frogs scrunched up their faces in a mixture of befuddlement and distaste. I'm sorry, my dear, one of the frogs said. We have never heard that song before, so I'm afraid we can't help you. Lana bid the frogs farewell and began to walk back into the depths of the woods. Despite the frogs being unable to help, she wasn't disheartened, and she instantly started thinking again about who else she could turn to for assistance. As Lana was thinking, she heard a rustling in a nearby flower bed. She bent down and peered closer amongst the pretty red flowers. The closer she got, the more she could hear a very high pitched sound. It sounded like a faint, ultrasonic singing voice. Lana used her paw to gently push aside the leaves of the plants and revealed a little white mouse, relaxing within the flower bed. Oh, I'm sorry, Lana apologised, feeling like she had intruded. I couldn't help but notice your sweet singing voice and I wanted to see where it was coming from. The white mouse smiled up at Lana and assured her it was not a problem. What a lovely voice you have, Lana continued. What were you singing about? The white mouse explained how he was rehearsing a love song. He informed her that the perfect way to make another mouse fall in love with you was by serenading them. Music was their love language. Lana was very impressed. Well, I think you'll have lots of mice falling in love with you soon with a song like that. The mouse thanked her for her compliment and asked how he could be of service. Lana explained how she was looking for someone who could help remind her of the rest of her mother's lullaby. With a singing voice as nice as his, perhaps the little mouse would know it. Alas, the mouse shook his head from side to side and proclaimed that he had never heard the likes of it before. We don't sing many sleepy songs in the mouse kingdom. We tend to only sing love songs, he explained, shrugging his tiny shoulders. Lana said goodbye to the friendly mouse and set back out on her search. She tried humming the tune as she walked, but the words and tune felt like a distant memory that she couldn't quite reach. The faint remnants of it were there, floating around in her brain like a jigsaw puzzle, waiting to be pieced together. But one big missing piece was preventing her from joining them all up. As she walked along, humming what she could remember of the tune, she was suddenly interrupted by a little voice from above her. What is that lovely sound you're humming, little bear? Lana looked up into the trees and saw a family of hummingbirds perched on a branch. They cocked their heads and gazed down at her inquisitively. Lana called up to the trees in response. It's the tune to a lullaby my mother always sings for us. But I can't remember the rest. I can only recall a short section of it. The smallest hummingbird suggested, 
does it sound like this? And he began to hum a jaunty little tune. But it wasn't the lullaby Lana was searching for. She shook her head. Does it sound like this? The largest hummingbird offered, before humming another tune that was a bit slower and melancholy. Lana shook her head. It still wasn't the tune. The hummingbirds tried humming several different tunes to Lana, in the hopes that one of them might ring a bell. Alas, not one of the tunes was familiar to Lana. The hummingbirds didn't know her mother's song either. Lana thanked the hummingbirds for their attempts to help and continued on her way. She seemed to have asked all of the most musical creatures in the woods by now. She couldn't think of anyone else who was as musically talented as the frogs, the mice and the hummingbirds. Who else is musical in the woods? Lana thought. Aha! She suddenly remembered. The antelope squirrels have the most fantastic rhythm. They're always tapping away with a musical beat. They'll surely know how the lullaby goes. The antelope squirrels lived out in the driest part of the woods, uncovered by trees. Lana made her way to the large, dusty clearing where the antelope squirrels were often seen. She knew she was heading in the right direction, as the closer she got, the louder she could hear a pulsing beat. Tap, 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 tap. The beat was catchy and rhythmic, and before Lana even knew it, she found herself walking along in perfect time with the beat. She reached the clearing and laughed out loud as she saw a large group of antelope squirrels all standing in a circle, tapping their feet and beating their hands on the ground to create a music circle. Lana swayed and danced to their music. Her spirits lifted. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, the beat went. One squirrel noticed Lana and broke away from the group, leaving them to continue with the music and scurrying up to Lana's feet. Are you enjoying the show? The little squirrel asked giddily. We've been practicing all day, you know. It's nice to have an audience. Lana confessed that she was adoring the music and felt the urge to dance around to the beat. Well, why don't you? The little squirrel exclaimed, pointing to the music circle. Let the beat carry you away. We don't mind. The little squirrel took Lana's paw in hand and guided her over to the centre of the circle. Every way Lana looked, she was surrounded by little music-making squirrels. They all appeared to be lost in the musical beat, and she couldn't resist joining in. Lana closed her eyes and noticed the vibrations of the beat on the ground, radiating into her feet. Her body felt loose and she couldn't stop her hips from swaying side to side. She danced alone in the middle of the circle, enjoying the intoxicating music. Tap, 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 tap. The repetitive beat was mesmerizing, and Lana almost felt like she was being hypnotized. Her head felt light, her body felt loose, and her feet barely touched the ground as she danced around. 
Eventually, the beat built to a crescendo, and the squirrels finished with a final rhythm. Tap, 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 tap. Then there was silence. Lana slowly opened her eyes, and she began to applaud them for their spectacular performance. The large circle of squirrels took a bow, rather comically, and they began to chatter amongst themselves, congratulating one another on a job well done. That was fantastic, Lana declared. You are all musical geniuses. The squirrels all modestly nodded their heads in agreement and said, Nobody ever thinks of us when they think of the best musical animals in the woods, but we know what we offer. Everyone else is just missing out. We're glad you enjoyed our music. Lana had become so distracted by their captivating beat that she had almost forgotten what she had come for in the first place. Remembering her mission, She asked the antelope squirrels if they knew any lullabies. The squirrels all shook their heads. I'm afraid we don't sing, said the squirrel that had originally greeted her. We just make music with our hands and feet. We don't sing the likes of lullabies. We're sorry we can't be of help. Lana felt defeated. She had run out of options in the woods. She couldn't think of anyone else nearby that sang or made music. That's when the little squirrel had an idea. Why don't you go down to the waterfront and ask the whales? They're always singing day in and day out. They'll be sure to know your lullaby. It was a great idea. Why hadn't Lana thought of the whales before? Lana set back off and walked all the way to the edge of the woods and climbed down a cliffside towards the coast of the sea. She sat on the edge of a big rock and called out across the deep blue water, Beluga whales, come out to play. Lana and her family would often come down to the water's edge to say hello to the beluga whales. They were very friendly sea creatures, and they had the most unusual faces that made them stand out from the other whales. They were a crystal clean white colour, and had large rounded foreheads and big grinning faces. The beluga whales were often compared to the birds on the land due to their penchant for singing. They made the most amazing collection of sounds when they were all together and sounded like a full orchestra of music. The beluga whales would whistle, chirp, squeal and click their tongues creating an impressive orchestration. As she called out across the water, she saw a herd of large figures slinking their way through the waters ahead and towards her. One by one, a pod of beluga whales popped their smiling faces up out of the water to greet her. Hello, Lana, they all chirruped pleasantly. You're up late. Shouldn't you be in bed yet? Lana explained how she had been walking around the woods all night, trying to find someone who could fill in the gaps in her memory of her mother's lullaby, but to no avail. The beluga whales offered to try to help her, and she started to sing the song. The beluga whales listened patiently to Lana's attempts at the lullaby, and when she was finished, 
They clapped together their little flippers in applause. That was lovely, Lana, one of the pod encouraged her. What a lovely song your mother sings. But I'm afraid we don't know it. We know lots of songs and lullabies ourselves, but we've never heard one that sounds like that before. Lana was starting to think that perhaps she would never find anyone who could help her remember the lullaby. How was she going to get her little brothers and sister to sleep if she couldn't sing for them? She thanked the beluga whales for their help and encouragement and decided to head back to her family's cave. Lana was growing weary, and the night was setting in. The moon was high in the sky and shining with a bright white light, and the stars twinkled in their celestial seats, watching the earth below. It was time that she headed home, and she was so disappointed that she hadn't remembered the rest of her mother's lullaby. She trudged through the woods, her eyes growing drowsy with each step. She felt like she was almost sleepwalking. She'd grown so tired during her search for the lullaby. All of a sudden, she noticed a sound on the evening breeze. It was the sound of a voice singing. No not singing, humming. It was humming a familiar tune, but she couldn't quite place what the song was. Lana picked up speed and started to race through the woods, following the sound of the humming. With every gallop of her four paws, the humming became louder and clearer. She was getting close. Eventually, she pushed through the trees and came into a clearing. It was the clearing right before her family's cave. The humming was louder than ever. Lana rushed inside the cave and came upon the sight of her mother back from fishing and her four younger siblings all gathered around her and sleeping deeply. Mummy Bear smiled warmly at Lana and welcomed her back with her arms out wide. Lana fell into her mother's comforting arms, exhausted from running around all evening. I've been trying to remember your lullaby all evening, Lana explained, burrowing her face into her mother's shaggy brown chest. I asked lots of other animals for help, but none of them knew it. Mummy Bear stroked Lana's back and replied, Well, of course they didn't know it. I made the song up myself, especially for my children. Lana giggled gently and released all of the tension she had built up and leant into her mother. Well, that would explain it. Would you like me to sing the song to you now and remind you? Mummy Bear asked, rocking Lana from side to side. Lana's eyes were already half closed, but she nodded and sleepily replied a yes. Mummy Bear began to sing her sweet song for her oldest child and watched as it worked its magic like it did every other night. It was no surprise that Lana couldn't remember the whole lullaby. It worked so well that the bear cubs were always deep asleep by the time the song was through. Mummy Bear sang and Lana drifted off into a deep slumber 
with her mother's melody whisking her away, happily and contentedly. Sleep, my darling, sleep through the night. Mama Bear is here and everything is right. Dream of adventures, dream of peace. I'll see you in the morning when your dreams all cease. Float among the clouds and kiss the sky. Swim beneath the rivers and roam the deserts dry. Live within a palace, bow to kings and queens. Do whatever you want. Nothing is what it seems. Now sleep, my darlings, curl up tight. You need not wake till the morning light. I will be here watching over you as you sleep, and your treasured little hearts I will always keep.